Hello and welcome to What's Going On Inside Japan. This is our second show, and if you missed our first one, we will provide a link for that one. And we're trying something different. This is a new thing that we're trying. So、uh, if you like the other format better, where we're close together and have masks on, or the social distancing one, then please let us know in the comments down below. So we are going to get started on the, with these stories right here. So the first story I wanted to put. Was has to do with some legal stuff. So, the Supreme Court in Japan ruled that couples are supposed to have the same last names if they're married. So,、um, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and give you some information about some things in Japan. Like,、um, like this is actually the second time that this has come up to the Supreme Co- Japanese Supreme Court. And both times, the Supreme Court ruled that they have to have the that couples have to have the same last name. So, in Japan, the just there are fifteen justices, and so this ha-、uh, so this is how that's decided. So, like I said, in Japan, there are some men who take the women's names. It happens very frequently. Well, not frequently, not too often, but it's usually like if the the female she has no other family line, like she has no brothers or anybody else to carry on that family name, so the husband sometimes takes on the name. That's okay. That's no problem. As long as they have the same last name, there's no problem. However, there have been some couples who want to have different last names, even though they're married, and In Japan, you're not allowed to do that, and it's been—it's actually an official rule that's been here for a long time. So, Derek, when you got married, was it easy to, to for your wife to take your last name, or it was maybe a single document at the city office? So,、um, you know, are you talking about emotional impact or?、Uh, Paperwork. As far as difficulties, I would say let's first go over paperwork. What about paperwork? How? So you said it was only one document. I mean, it's so long ago. <laughs> If you told me it was ten, twenty, or two, I would say sure, you're right. So,、um, yeah, you know, and I don't think I did the paperwork. <laughs>、uh, sorry. Okay. No. No. No problem. No problem. No, I understand. So yeah, there's there's that. So yeah, and so was there any debate whether you want to take her last name or she want to take your last name or, you know? Yeah, I mean the the there was a conversation,、um, you know. So like if I order food at a restaurant instead of using my foreign katakana sounding last name.、Mm-hmm. Um, You know, I would use a Japanese name, just simple for them to remember. You know, so how do you spell that? What's that? <laughs> you know, you would be surprised, like how how many mistakes can be made with a foreigner's last name. You know, the names are so foreign; they're completely meaningless. So they can, you know, yeah. So names names definitely can be a problem, foreign names more so. Yeah,、um, I think the katakana versions of my name don't match my name at all. So、um, yeah, you know, I, it's not a real struggle, but it is an inconvenience, something that comes up now and then. Yeah, I I completely understand, especially when it comes to paperwork. Sometimes you don't have enough spaces for your name. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, usually they just have kanji, so it's going to be two characters and two characters. But you know, just how McDonald's is three syllables, but in Japan it's Makudo Naruto. Like, <laughs> it just becomes so much longer. What do you think about? People having different last names and being married.、Um, in general, I'm always a fan of、uh, individual rights.、Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt other people, I think you should be able to do what's best for you. So um, I'm not surprised that the government has made an arbitrary ruling that makes everyone's life more difficult. I'm not too surprised about that. Mm. But, um, yeah, you know, here you have family registries and it's uh, definitely a different system than in the West. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Like, there are times where there are some rules that I don't agree with, but then there are times where, you, yeah, there, I wouldn't want to, you know, violate anybody's individual rights either. So you said it perfectly. Okay. So do you have any other input or anything about this first story? Um, no, you know. A lot of Japan's stories are just, here's a regulation and here's somebody who was inconvenienced by something that shouldn't exist. Mm. Um, you know, American news stories are mostly tragedies. So, mm. um, sure, this is, uh, I think, a very Japanese news story. Okay, so for this next story, um, it's uh, hmm, not your... It's not your typical story. It's uh, kind of strange. And after you hear an anime that's closely related to this, I think you kind of see where this story is going. So, uh, Derek, have you ever heard of this anime called he uh, Higehiro? After being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. That's the name of the whole thing. Oh, okay, so um, so pretty much, like I said, after you he heard that title of the anime, which okay. just recently premiered, like um, this year, yeah, it's supposed to be a wholesome story. I've never watched it. I never heard anything about it before this story, but um, yeah, it's something similar happened. So a 29-year-old man from Tokyo took in this minor who happened to be, um, you know, female high school student from Saitama. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so she was living with him for a couple of days. So she ran away, lived with him. She actually initiated everything because she was like, I need to get away from my house or whatever. And he decided to take her in. So... Yeah, <laughs> so good thing is no harm. She she experienced no harm. Nothing. She, they didn't find anything like wrong with her or anything like that. So not much happened from my understanding of the story there. But yeah, it's it's kind of a weird story, and I kind of wanted to bring this up because of something that I'm going to reveal at the end. But yeah, so needless to say, after tracking the girl and everything, they found her at his apartment. And he's charged with, you know, child abduction. So, um, do you want... So, okay, so if if you were to take in a minor, which would be a weird thing, do you think it would be against the law? Just somebody's like, I want to run away from home. Can I stay with you for a little bit until I figure out what I want to do? Well, so, it, you know, I would say that in Japan, the letter of the law is often more important important than the spirit uh you know so um the fact that he got arrested i'm not surprised you know i mean if, if they if he was a friend of the family and he was offering shelter to someone you know in a dangerous situation like you know but if if he cluelessly thought hanging out with a random high school girl is cool like, is not going to be a problem. That's kind of his problem. So I think everybody involved probably could have seen this coming. Um, you know, so I really don't know how bad her situation was. But, um, yeah, so I think it's, 
Uh, uh, pretty easy to see this coming. Yeah. Yeah, and so, like, I would say most people should have seen that this was not correct. However, he didn't think there was anything wrong with it. However, here's the twist. The man was a... It, he was a lawyer. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, yeah, that's why I had to bring up this story. At first, I was like, okay, this story, you know, it's nothing. But the fact that he was a lawyer and this happened, I'm like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, sure. You know, helping somebody in need is definitely good. Being a lawyer and not knowing there's a problem bringing back random minors. Um yeah, maybe he should have his license looked into. Okay, so I know I reached my goal for this episode, was, which was to make Derek chuckle a little. That's my goal for every episode. Just a little chuckle. That's, that makes, makes sure I, you know, I meet my goal. So I'm glad I accomplished my goal for this time. That's great. <laughs> All right. So shall we move on to the next story? Okay, so for the next story, there's actually, you know, it's about adults who are being surveyed about elementary school. So they surveyed about 500 people and they asked them, what do they hate the most about elementary school? So number 10 was school trips. So I'm just going to give you the list right now. Number 10 is school trips. Number nine is culture festivals. So for those who do not know, there's a festival, which they call culture festival, where they, you know, as it says, bring out the culture and everything like that. They usually, it's just like a festival that you, if you've seen like Japanese anime or something, it's pretty much like that, like a festival, but then, you know, they add a few things here and there. Okay. So this next one, eight, I've never heard about it, but mountain climbing, I guess that's a thing for elementary some elementary school students. I don't know. Have you heard about that one, Derek? These are the least favorite parts of elementary school. Yes, and these are adults who are interviewed about their past. I think camping, climbing a mountain, making curry is something that's pretty common at elementary school. Okay. Okay. So number seven is the entrance ceremony. Which, for those who don't know, entrance ceremonies are the same as graduation ceremonies, but in reverse. It's welcoming the students into the school. So that's number seven. So number six is kind of like the, what I just mentioned, the graduation ceremony, where the students have to sit there quietly and just, yeah, wait patiently for their fellow classmates or their themselves to graduate. Number five is a music festival. I don't know, Derek, have you have you ever experienced a music festival for elementary school? I mean, I know junior high schools have Gasho Kankuru, where like all the kids practice the same song and the different classes compete to see who does it best. I don't remember that as being an elementary school thing, but I'm sure there's probably something. Okay. Yeah, because I have not heard of a music festival. I have not been to any of my son's music festivals, if they had any. So, okay. Number four, emergency drills. So, yeah, that includes earthquake, fire, and things like that. Sure, maybe once a term they've got to run out to the playground and then there will be some firefighters and they will uh, run you through some of the... You know, they'll have a fire truck and a hose and sure, that's pretty, pretty, pretty common. Yeah, especially during summer when it's hot. Ugh. Yeah, I bet that's horrible. <laughs> okay, so number three, parent observation classes. So, or open school, as some people call it. It's for those who don't know, it's when the parents go watch their kids in that do their normal school day routine, things like that. And so this one, they actually gave more detail why kids or adults didn't like this as a child. It, some people said that it mixed their school life and the home life together, which felt very uncomfortable. 
that they felt like the teacher felt like they were under pressure a lot more to perform better because the parents are watching. And yeah, it just made for an uncomfortable scene. So yeah, parent observation classes. So I'm pretty sure you've been to some, right, Derek? I've, you know, yeah. I've been on both sides. I don't think anybody's really happy there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, it's it's always like if my son, one of my sons, like I'm watching one of my sons and then all of a sudden it's like they're staying super quiet and I'm like, oh, make me proud. Try to do something. Raise your hand first or something. <laughs> sure. But no, like, yeah, it, I could see how it becomes like so much pressure. So like I said, this is a poll of 500 people. The parent observation classes is 117 people said that they didn't like the parent observation classes. So number two is sports day with 180 people saying that they did not like sports day. So like the reason for this is because there are so many people who don't like doing sports. And so they had, they had a lot of pressure on them. It's like, you don't like doing sports, but you have to do all these sports. Mm. It's like a mandatory PE. However, your parents and grandparents are watching you. So if you don't do well, everybody in your family sees this. <laughs> and so that's even more pressure than the parent observation classes. And some people hated how the class leader or somebody in charge of that would like get on their case if they messed up a little or something like that. And so it created unwanted attention. So, yeah, I don't know. You probably experienced quite a few sports days, right? Sure. I, I don't like being out in the sun with, you know, no cover I mean, watching kids. I don't know. compete. So. <laughs> yeah. Like we, Luckily, at my son's elementary school, um, we, before the pandemic, we were actually able to, like, get, like, coverings and tents and things like that. We had to choose our spot, but they actually kind of went crazy. You actually had to go the day before to find your spot, to claim your spot, so it was really crazy. So, okay. Do you know what the number one thing that adults hated um, that's a tough one. I mean, you've covered sports day, culture day, mountain climbing. Um, if I had to guess, I would probably say it was cleaning. Okay, that's a good guess. That is a good guess. However, the number one thing is marathon. They've got to run like, you know, one to five kilometers. Yeah, exactly. So... For our U.S. viewers, it's about, like, two point two and a half miles. Like, that's usually, like, I would say the range or almost the most. So, yeah. Yeah, so 210 people voted for this out of 500. 210 people, almost half of the people voted this as their number one dislike. So, yeah, uh, apparently... Kids don't like running, and I don't blame them. <laughs> like, I'm not, there's nothing wrong against running, but then when you're forced to, to do it at such a distance, I can understand why this wouldn't bring up some good memories. Yeah, I absolutely didn't like running in high school. It was one of my least favorite sections of gym class. Me, personally, I, I loved running when I was a child. It's just... I would hate, I think I would hate running a marathon, though. I used to just like running around, sprinting, things like that. But marathon running, not for me. So, yeah. All right. So that's pretty much a list of things of a survey that was just taken not too long ago. So, all right. So I do have one final story that we can get into. Okay, so for the final story, it's about manager positions for women in Japan. So this is what some people called womanomics. So I thought that was actually a pretty catchy name. So good job, whoever thought about that one. So, 
Yeah. Um, so in this thing, in this story, they, there was a survey about 80% of the companies in Japan, which includes about like 181 large to mid-range companies. And they wanted to see how many had, you know, manager, female managers. And so what Japan is trying to do, they're trying to make get a target of 30% at least, but in the next decade, just trying to hit that 30% mark. However, you know, the virus happened and not only that, it's there are other factors that are in play. So what do you think the percentage is, Derek, of for most Japanese companies, how many have female managers? I mean, if the target is 30, I'm guessing currently they've got 5 to 10. Exactly. Oh, yeah, pretty much exactly. <laughs> like, I know it's weird to say exactly when you give a range. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it's fewer than 10%. And so, yeah, I thought this was an interesting story that Japan, they kind of do want to progress that way. Well, some people do. However, there are many factors. One was the virus. Another thing is, um, like the, like if a woman gets pregnant, like what would happen, and everything like that. Daycare, how many, how much time they get off, and everything like that. So, for having a family, it Japan's not really well adjusted for that yet. And but they're trying to, but mm, it seems like it's. By the rate that this is increasing, it seems like they're not going to meet their goal. So I just thought I'd just bring out this one last story just to, you know, throw out some other type of story out there. So, okay, so I hope Japan has good luck with this. And, yeah, hopefully we can get more females out there. You know, they they only make like 50% of the, you know, population and everything so you would think it would be a little higher but yeah but it is it is a male oriented country and they're trying to slowly change that so i think it will be difficult but i think it will be possible what do you think do you think when do you think they could get to 30 percent you know i mean the u.s just got the first female vice president um japan is a little slower to change kind of conservative so it, it's going to be a slow slow progress but you know the Japanese labor market is changing the population is aging so who knows um, 30% sure you know good luck <laughs> I wish you the best okay okay so that was pretty much our final story. So um, please tell us what you think. What was your favorite story in the comments below? Or if you have another interesting story, something that happened last month, please let us know in the comment section. Please give this video a like and everything. And uh, if you like these type of stories, or if you like last times better, then yeah, please let us know because we would like to improve and we'll like to do th more things like this in the future. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.